Well, it's time to pull things together on transport, and that's what we'll be talking about in this short lecture, the drift diffusion equation. Just as a re quick review, we talked about a general expression for the current in a two-terminal device. Uh, this general current expression here is sometimes called the Landauer approach to current and transport. And uh, it involves a number of fundamental constants and quantities like transmission, channels, Fermi window. So for small devices, it's important to recognize that you can actually count the number of channels. So the current comes in discrete chunks. For short devices, the probability that an electron injected from the first contact will go across and exit the second contact, that's the transmission, that probability is one. We call those devices ballistic. And the important point is to recognize that it is differences in the Fermi levels of these two contacts that cause current to flow in a small nano device. We also showed how you can take a, this same approach and make the device very long, the contacts drop out of the picture. We came up with this very general expression for current in a large bulk semiconductor. And what we found is that the current is proportional to the gradient of the quasi-Fermi level, something that is analogous to the Fermi level in equilibrium. So that's a very important point to take away. We are largely going to be concerned with the expression for the large bulk devices and thinking about gradients of quasi-Fermi levels. So if we begin with that current equation for a bulk semiconductor, if we recognize that we can relate the quasi-Fermi level to the carrier density, solve for the quasi-Fermi level, take its gradient, insert that into the current equation, we end up with this equation. We have two components now, a drift component, a drift in the gradient of the conduction band minima, and a diffusion component. Okay, now if we work a little bit more, we recognize that the bottom of the conduction band goes down when the electrostatic potential goes up. Using that, we can take the gradient, and we find that what we have is Q times the electric field. We can also define KT times mobility to be Q times the diffusion coefficient, and we end up with a simple equation that is often the starting point for semiconductor device analysis. This is called the drift diffusion equation. The first term is the drift of carriers in a small electric field. The second term is the diffusion of carriers down a concentration gradient. That expression, the drift diffusion equation, follows from the much more general current expression. So let's consider a problem here. Uh, let's say that we have a semiconductor in equilibrium, doped non-uniformly, so it's doped more heavily with acceptors uh, near x equals zero than it is in the bulk. So there's this gradient of the holes. Well, what's going to happen? Holes are mobile. They're in random thermal motion. They would diffuse down the concentration gradient. So holes will diffuse to the right. There will be a diffusion flux. Well, is there a current? or a net flux of holes, remember we're in equilibrium. There can be no current flowing in equilibrium, or we'd have a perpetual motion machine and infinite source of power. So there can't be a current. So we have to conclude no current is flowing. How can there be no current flowing when we have a diffusion current? Well, there must be a drift current. There must be an electric field that is giving us a drift current exactly equal and opposite in sign to the diffusion current and giving us zero current everywhere. So we can see that that has to occur from simple physical arguments and we can deduce that the electric field has to point in the negative x direction because it will exert a force on the holes that pushes them back and stops them from diffusing. Okay. So in equilibrium, no current flow. Quasi-Fermi level is equal to the Fermi level. Its gradient is zero. From a drift diffusion perspective, we have drift currents and diffusion currents canceling each other out. So this is our drift diffusion equation. We have one for holes. We have one for electrons. In general, we have both electron and hole currents. If we want the total current in the semiconductor, we simply add the two. Oftentimes, we'll find one dominates versus the other. We also saw that we can relate the parameters in the drift diffusion equation to some microscopic parameters, things like 
momentum relaxation times or scattering times, effective mass, thermal velocity, mean free path. And there was this very important relation called the Einstein relation. If we know the mobility, then we know the diffusion coefficient. The two are intimately related by this Einstein relation, which is something that has been known for quite a long time. Now we also know that the mobility depends on the doping density. We dope a semiconductor in order to introduce carriers. But when we do that, we have ionized dopants. Those ionized dopants can deflect the mobile carriers when they're zipping by, and that's a scattering event. So what we find is that the more heavily we dope a semiconductor, the more carriers we get, but also the lower their mobility is. Now, it's relatively easy to measure the mobility of a semiconductor, so that's what you'll typically find. Uh, plots like this that will give you the mobility for the relevant semiconductor. If you need the diffusion coefficient, then we invoke the Einstein relation and we deduce the diffusion coefficient from the mobility. So let's do that. Let's take some numbers for pure undoped silicon at room temperature. This is the electron mobility and the hole mobility. Let's invoke the Einstein relation at 300 K and let's compute the diffusion coefficient for electrons. We'll find that it's about 35 centimeters squared per second. The diffusion coefficient for holes is less because the mobility is less. It's about 12 and a half centimeters squared per second. How do we get calibrated into what those numbers mean? Well, it's useful to remember that when you solve a diffusion equation, the distance that particles will move due to random thermal motion in a concentration gradient is roughly the square root of diffusion coefficient times time. So if we ask ourselves, how far can electrons diffuse in a very short time, one nanosecond, we'll plug in numbers and find that that's about two micrometers. Two micrometers is actually a very significant distance in terms of semiconductor devices. Uh, many of our devices today are smaller than two microns. So these carriers can diffuse um, quite far in a very short period of time. Well, that brings us to the summary. We've sort of discussed some basic concepts of current flow that we'll use when we talk about semiconductor devices later. Uh, there's a whole current that's proportional to the gradient of a whole quasi-Fermi energy, or we can separate it out and write it as a drift diffusion whole current. There is a similar current for the a similar expression for the electron current. The electron current is proportional to the gradient of the quasi-Fermi level for electrons, or we can also separate it into two components, a drift component and a diffusion com component. In general, we'll have to add those two currents to get the total current, and the Einstein relation is a very important relation that allows us to determine the diffusion coefficient from the easy-to-measure mobility. Okay, so those are some fundamental concepts of current flow. Uh, in the out of equilibrium, there are some other important concepts that we'll need to discuss in this unit, uh, beginning with recombination in the next lecture. Thank you.